Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson here, your friend and professor from Johnson County Community College. In chapter six, we use JavaScript to validate and enhance this form. But before we get into the JavaScript, I think it's important just to take a step back and talk about HTML5 and how it added a lot of interesting pieces to the standard that allowed you to validate form input without getting involved in JavaScript. And I found this nice article. You can see the URL and here are the items that it references, the things that are new in the HTML5 standard that really help you validate your form input and get good data before even having to worry about JavaScript. And I'm just going to go over a couple top ones. Every browser will deal with the required attribute a little bit differently and give a little bit different message should you leave a field blank that's required in a form. And you might have seen that coded as required equals quotation required quotation because it seems a little odd just to put the attribute name there without the value. But in HTML5, that's absolutely fine. Probably my favorite is the new text input types. And now we're talking about the type attribute value of email, URL, number, tell, and date. You've already seen that work well on browsers. If the type equals email, then we have to have an at symbol in the value or the form will not validate cleanly. And these are things we can just do with HTML. We don't need JavaScript to enhance our forms this way. The type equals number and type equals range controls look like this on the form. And so that will obviously too help the user inner values that are valid for that field and not attempt to put text into a number field. And there are all of these new different HTML input types, type equals color, date, date time, that you can use to enhance your form. Turning to our chapter six exercise, what our JavaScript is going to do is check for each one of these sections of the form to make sure it's been filled out correctly. If a custom message, if this checkbox is checked, then we're going to have to enter text. If my billing address or my delivery address are not filled out completely, I'll get red error messages. The delivery date is not filled out correctly, I'll get a red error message payment and also create account sections. So as you go through your JavaScript, you'll be knocking off each of these sections and validating to make sure that they're correct. So for example, if I check custom message and then I put in a custom message and I click place the order, then the red message should come off of that particular section. For billing address, it has to be complete. Here we live in Kansas, and I'm going to put in the school's phone number, 469-8500. Then that particular error should come off. So this is how you know if you've got it coded correctly or not. As you're going through your chapter, you do want to make sure that each section works correctly because it only gets more difficult to troubleshoot if you keep writing code when you know there's an error. So do stop and use your troubleshooting skills or post all your files to the student web server and get me involved and I will help you troubleshoot this. On the delivery address, your JavaScript will fill this completely out for you when you click this checkbox. And when I place the order now, I've cleared three areas. Delivery date, this is interesting. We're not only using JavaScript to make sure there's a delivery date, we're using JavaScript to provide the correct number of days in each month. So January, for example, has 31 days, but February, we're changing the drop-down list to only 28 days. Because when I place the order now, I've cleared one, two, three, four areas. I still don't have my credit card information in there correctly. Card number and a bogus expiration date and CVV number. But as long as it's valid according to the rules that we've keyed in JavaScript, then we've cleared that area. Our last area is to create an account and there is an error in that section. I'm going to go ahead and put my password in here and verify it and place the order. And the cool thing is that when this completely validates clean, the data is sent to this new file results.htm and JavaScript is being used to provide the field name, the equal sign, and the value for each one of your entries. And so that's interesting to look at as well. Here's my results page. Let's go back to the form for a second. Here's my form page. The action says send this data to results.htm in the same folder because there's no path here. And the default method is get if there's no method listed. The results page then has a little JavaScript in it. And this location.search object is the value of all of the field names, these input boxes, 
the field names and the values that you've typed in. So for example, the text area custom text, when we look at our resulting web page, custom message is on and custom text equals high world. So this is pretty fascinating too. This JavaScript is taking all those values that are in that query string and parsing them out and providing all of the detail about the field name and the value in a paragraph. I just find it fascinating that the author gave you that script as well. When I place the order, I want you to look at the, the URL because when you place an order, notice that all the query string is all this part to the right. That's the get method in the opening form tag sends data through the URL. And that's what the results.html file is picking up. All that query string is located in location.search. Again, that's well beyond what we're trying to achieve here in JavaScript 1. All I really want you to do is make sure that you can code the JavaScript as it's given to you that works and interacts with snoot.html. HTM and your JavaScript is going to go in the snoot.js file and hopefully you're putting in your comments to make it a lot easier to understand and read your code and debug it later and get that form to validate cleanly, get that data passed over to results.htm successfully. Thank you.